Okay, recording. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my brand new channel, uh, Jack Reads Books, in which I, well, I read books. Um, this channel, I will also be reviewing manga, comic books, all things reading, basically. I will be, uh, I will be reviewing and such. So, what better way to start off the video than what I've read so far this year? Uh, this is like the half wait year point, so I've done everything, um, from January up to um, starting in July will be the other half of the next year. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So, uh, these two were my first introduction to, um, light novels, which are basically like thick manga, but with no pictures. Um, it's basically like, it's kind of weird because it was weird reading like anime stuff within books, like describing like an anime scenarios in a book. Um, but overall, I, I enjoyed the experience. Uh, so, first thing I read was uh, Kizomana Gatre, which is kind of the first uh, book in the Monogatre series. Um, I enjoyed this. However, like, people say how, like, the prose are so fantastic and the author likes to play around with words. You know, and this is a translated, um, translated book. So I don't think that got across exactly the right way or like, not that I can notice. I, I It's probably kind of hard because Japanese and English are two very like distinct languages, um, especially in writing and stuff like that. So um, it was still kind of enjoyable. It was a cool spin on uh, vampire stuff. Um, and the plot is fairly straightforward and simple. Uh, I actually like the movie a lot more because it takes the simplicity of the plot and like presents it in a artsy, cool animation kind of way. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I, I enjoyed myself. It's pretty good. So I put this like B tier. Um, maybe eventually I'll finish the Monogatari series later on down in the year. But as of right now, I'm just going to stick to the first one. Uh, then we have Tanya of the Evil, which the basic premise of this is this girl she um or this guy he was this uh business tycoon guy then i think he gets killed by a train or something someone pushes him in front of the train and he meets god and god is all like uh you're the biggest piece of shit i've ever seen in my life and then the businessman is like well god actually you're very hypocritical and blah 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 blah, blah. so then god sends him to this other world in which he is recurring to this little girl and um he's like born to this like world war one world war two era of war where like magic exists and stuff like that so uh the whole thing is just him being reincarnated as this little girl uh with still like adult knowledge and knowledge from his past life and stuff um and him kind of trying to figure out how to uh be the top dog of this war in order to kill god basically uh so it, it, it's kind of cool it's a cool premise cool concept uh i one of my lesser known passions is like history especially like military history and stuff like that and they re incorporate like strategies that have been used throughout history so that was kind of cool uh overall i enjoyed myself quite a bit i would say i enjoyed it a little bit more than kizo monogatari has a little bit more going on uh but besides that yeah it's pretty good then we have the eighth book of the wheel of time path of daggers which if you want to know my opinions on the series as I've read them, uh, that's over by my other channel, Sinister Sheep, in which I did a uh, What I Read in 2021, in which I went over all the books I read in that year. This one is just the halfway point. Um, and the slog started happening around uh, A Crown of Swords. So uh, it, it, everyone in the Wheel of Time knows the Wheel of Time is fantastic. It's written fantastically by Robert Jordan. He's a wizard at uh, writing. His prose are fantastic. However... There's a slog in a wheel of time. It's 14 books. There's bound to be a slog, but the slog lasts about four books, starting at a crown of thorns, and then Path of Daggers is the eighth one, which I'm talking about right now. And by golly, is it a slog? Now, the only reason why it's really an S tier is because Robert Jordan is an excellent, excellent character writer. Uh, you know, I care about these characters so much that I'm willing to put up with anything he throws at me. Uh, however, these books are kind of 600 pages. 700 to 600 pages and like nothing really happens uh besides some character work here and there um and you know they're always saying like the last battle is coming the last battle is coming well this is book eight in a 14 book series so it's not coming soon enough 
But uh, overall, I, I enjoyed it myself. Uh, this is my second time reading it. Uh, I've read The Wheel of Time before in high school, and I just started reading it again around a year or two ago. But uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to work on finishing the series again um, within the next two months, so hopefully that happens. Um, but yeah, so overall, you know, not great in the storytelling perspective. Character work is kind of a miss, but the prose and stuff like that are really good. Then we have the first book in the Age of Madness. So again, in that previous video, which you should check out, I'll link it down below in the description. Uh, I had just finished the First Law trilogy, uh, and that trilogy was great. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I don't actually read Joe Abercrombie books. I only listen to them on audiobook because Stephen Pacey, the narrator, is one of the best narrators in the industry. Every voice is distinct. A lot of audiobook narrators will just like kind of sound the same throughout like each characters kind of sound the same so you don't know who's talking so you have to really pay attention whereas Stephen Pacey his character voices are very distinct you know exactly who is talking um and yeah so he's just a great narrator overall and um Joe Abercrombie's world is fantastic and you know the first book in the first law trilogy the blade itself was kind of like um more like a starting point like it's just building up things so nothing's really happening and then the rest of the trilogy is when stuff starts happening and it's awesome so i thought it would be the same type of scenario for the age of madness trilogy uh but no the first book a little bit of hatred is fantastic it's absolutely awesome it, it does that thing where like the sequel trilogy focuses on the like, kids of uh the previous characters and normally that's like a big drawback because they're just like their uh parents but no this one doesn't make it one as obvious like it makes it more uh, a gradual process throughout the entire series like they start out not wanting to be like their parents at all and then toward the end of the series they end up being exactly like their parents um so i i, I like that kind of uh structure and yeah i think it's honestly better than uh the first first law trilogy age of madness is great and the first book is fantastic you know uh it drops bombshell after bombshell like these these audiobooks slash books like like i could not put down like i need to see stuff till the end which is why like immediately after a little bit of hatred i started reading a trouble with peace and that's also and i stared these are basically like three books but telling one singular story um so like all of these are going to be s tier like i'm not even going to bother like yeah all of them are top s tier they're the best books i've read uh so far this year um yeah and they're just fan fan fantastic uh i can't recommend them enough very grim dark um so if you don't like really violent stuff or really nihilistic stuff in your fantasy definitely keep away from first law because it's not for you but uh first law is fantastic age of madness fantastic all of it definitely definitely pick it up like this would be like uh first law trilogy i would definitely tell someone to start out if they're just trying to get into like adult fantasy uh, then we have Stormfront, which is the first Dresden and Files book. Uh, I like this. It's uh, basically a pulp action um, detective noir type of story, but with wizards and magical creatures and such. And uh, uh, Harry Dresden is a wizard, and he's basically trying to uh, figure out clues and stuff you know about vampires werewolves stuff like that and the first one was really good i uh i really enjoyed it quite a bit um i would put a high b tier it's it's really good at what it does which is just being a fun detective story but with magic thrown into it um the writing's very good it's told in the first person so it's a fairly easy read again for adult fiction i would definitely uh point people to dress and files however it's there's about 17 books like this has been going on since i think like the late 90s early 2000s like and the series has this, took it a breath since but the books are relatively short they're only about three at max 400 pages at least like 300 so they're fairly easy like weekend reads you can go past them unlike wheel of time where each one of them at least is 700 pages uh whereas this one is a much more lighter read and a much more like snappy like the pasting is just uh, constantly uh, going so I would definitely recommend that for anyone who's just trying to get into uh, reading uh, then we have uh, Winter's Heart which is the ninth book of the Wheel of Time uh, this one I liked more than Path of Daggers it's technically part of the slog but 
I only think it's because there's a lot of politics in this one, but I kind of like the politics of the world. Again, it does suffer from dragging and nothing really gets moving, so to say. People are generally in the same place. Like, Fayil is still captured. God damn it. <laughs> in this freaking book. But, um... No, overall, and the ending is fantastic. I won't spoil it in case you want to get into the wheel time. Uh, wheel time is definitely for more advanced readers. Like, you have to get a couple books under your belt because, like, you have to be constantly paying attention. There's over, like, a thousand characters, over 100, I think, POC characters, or POV characters, uh, point of view characters. So, um, but yeah, I, I thought book nine was pretty good. I would probably put it, like, right here. I, I, I enjoyed Stormfront a lot more. Again, these books are kind of a slog so that's why i would put that there but yeah so that's where i would put uh winner's heart then i read mr mercedes by stephen king part of the bill hodges uh trilogy which i completed um so we'll get into those books but mr mercedes the first one is my second favorite um it's really good at setting up um brady so basically it's this detective story where like this retired detective is um retired he's just lounging around contemplating suicide and then he gets a letter from a serial killer which he never caught and the serial killer was called mr mercedes and what he did was uh this whole time um this time period is during the recession so like people are looking for jobs and stuff so there's this job fair and the mr mercedes guy drives a mercedes into the crowd and kills a bunch of people and this detective was on the case and never caught the guy so now the serial killer is sending him a letter like haha you'll never catch me i'm so goddamn evil yada 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 so then instead of you know killing himself um the main police detective bill hodges decides to go after this guy um and stuff like that and it's just a crazy stuff uh great characters overall uh, again, addicting book. Like I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook guy is fantastic. I don't remember his name, but he does all three books. He's very, 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 very good. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I would put uh, Mr. Mercedes in the A tier, definitely. Now we have our first D tier, Crossroads to Twilight, which is the tenth book in the Wheel of Time. Uh, this one just nothing happens. It's so god. I contemplated skipping it halfway through. Because nothing happens. You're honestly, you're better off just like reading a wiki about it. Because like it's it's a giant waste of time. Again, Rob Jordan's prose are fantastic, and I don't want to rack on him too much because uh, he he was not in uh, he was not so healthy during this time. Unfortunately, um, as we'll I'll soon explain, he shortly passed away. Um, not after this book, but the book after we'll be talking about. Um, but I mean, it's still, it's, it's, thank God it's the last of the slog, but it's definitely the worst of the slog. But I would not blame anyone in just looking up a recap video or something for this because it, like, if you were already, like, being like, come on, when's it, when's it going to pick up again during this whole slog? And you read this and decide to give up, I would not blame you. Um, but yeah, so that's Crossroads of Twilight. Unfortunately, uh, it's not god awful, um, but, you know, in the context of the wheel time and just as a book in general, it's not great. Then we have Iron Gold, which is part of a uh, new trilogy in the Red Rising trilogy. Again, I talked about the Red Rising trilogy in that previous video that will be linked down below on my other channel. Um, and th this one was good. Um, however, I think uh, it's probably my least favorite out of like the Red Rising series. As a total, it's too long. Number one, uh, there's multiple POC, POVs, uh, which is good, but like some characters, you're just like, I, I don't want to read you. Uh, can we stop, please? It's kind of like the brand, you know what I mean? If you've read like Game of Thrones, it's like the brand chapters. You're like, oh my god, all right, here we go. Uh, those are some of the characters there. Uh, so it's a little bit weaker, but. You know, putting all that aside, the world building, the sci-fi stuff, it's fantastic. Again, Red Rising Trilogy, if you're just trying to get into science fiction, that is the absolute perfect spot. You start there. Like, no other books. Don't even look at them. Start right there. Uh, that is a perfect introduction to sci-fi. Uh, I know I had some complaints, but overall, I would give this an A tier. Uh, the characters are still well written and stuff like that. It's just, it's pretty much just one person that I don't like reading at all. But um, overall, it's it's a really 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 good book i did enjoy mr mercedes a little bit more i will definitely give it that 
Then we have Finders Keepers, which I'm going to put ahead. This is the second book out of the Stephen King, uh, Bill Hodges trilogy. Uh, this one is basically about a kid who, um, so the book starts out like this author who wrote uh, a trilogy of books um, that were critically acclaimed, especially the last book. But the last book uh, fell into some controversy or whatever. So this dude pretty much like um, steals the um, the unfinished book. So originally there was a trilogy in this book, and then um, and then the writer drafted like uh, another trilogy that was never published because he never wanted to publish anything else. Uh, and this robber basically steals those books and uh, hides them away for cash. But the only thing is, if you're stealing a dead author, he kills the author. It, this all happens within the first chapter. Um, if you try to sell those books after a dead author, people are going to think that you killed the author, so you can't sell them off. But he never really wanted that. He just wanted to read them for himself. Uh, so he buries them, then gets arrested on some other charge, uh, escapes from prison, comes back and the books aren't there. And it's because this little kid, um, around 2008, 2009, uh, found those books and then started slowly um, uh, taking the cash, because he also had cash with him, um, taking the cash and like spending it throughout during the recession to help his family out. And um, so now he's trying to sell those books. And then Bill Hodges gets tied in. I don't want to spoil anything. That's just a basic premise of it. It might sound confusing. Uh, read a Wikipedia think about it if what I said was confusing or I didn't explain right but that one was definitely my favorite out of all of them and very meta with its uh ending but I liked it uh Prince of Fools I would put probably like right here uh this is part of the Mark Lawrence trilogy the Red Queen I read <laughs> a lot of these are continuation <coughs> oh excuse me oh drink water Ooh, that was nasty. Ooh. Um, yeah, so Prince of Fools is... Uh, so Mark Lawrence, uh, all his books take place in the same universe, but at different um, areas. So there's some crossover, but you can read Prince of Thorns without reading the... Um, or um, uh, the Red, Red Queen trilogy without uh, reading the Prince of Thorns trilogy, which uh, that one was... Uh, good, but I had some complaints about it in my previous video. Again, check that in the description down, lo down below. But the Red Queen trilogy is really good. Plays up more of the politics of it. Uh, I don't know if I'll finish this one. I just kind of want to get into Red Sisters, so I might just leave it off. Uh, how this book ends is pretty shocking, though. But um, And again, these are like 300-page books and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, as far as first reads, I guess you could start with this one. This would be good. Um, but yeah, so Prince of Fools... Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the plot because it's a little complicated and I tried explaining Finders Keepers and I felt like I didn't do that great of a job. Uh, but yeah, all right. So then we have uh, Path of Destruction, um, which is a Star Wars book about Darth Bane. And I have reread these books like a million times. I'm only going to read the first one because the other two are meh but like the first darth bane book is fantastic darth bane is one of my favorite characters basically he created the rule of two so in the old republic games and stuff you see there's like a shit ton of sith right like sith are everywhere uh but darth bane wanted to create this rule of two where like basically it's an apprentice and a master the master teaches everything to its apprentice and then eventually the apprentice will kill off the master become the master um, grab his own apprentice and the cycle will start all over so there's only like two super 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 powerful siths instead of like a bunch of siths so um that was really that's a really cool concept and darth bane as a character is just so 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 cool um but yeah so uh this is gonna be tear heavy but um yeah i would put this like right there uh yeah no it was pretty good all right, now we have the builders. Uh, I'm going to put this on top of C. Come on. Um, this one is fun. If you've ever read Red Tail, this is like the more adult version of that. Uh, basically, all the main characters are uh, like little rodents. Like there's a mouse, there's a bat, badger, there's uh, a weasel. 
and stuff like that. And they're trying to take down the kingdom because they've been oppressed so far. So it's basically that. It's only, it's barely even like 250 pages. Like you could read this within an afternoon, within like three hours, you can finish this book. Uh, it was really good. Again, it just like suffers from the shortness of it because I wish I had gotten a lot more from the characters, but like there was just no time to do that. But it's still a very enjoyable read. So if you want to pick up a light read or something like that, that's good. I always say that like uh, if you're getting burned out from reading, just read a short book. Like some of these are like Coraline and um, and then I woke up are like again barely 300 pages, about like maybe even 200 pages. Some of them like just do that and then you'll get on your reading mojo again. Um, but yeah, so not much to say there. Um, and then Jade War, which is the second book in the Greenbone Saga. Again, <laughs> I talked about Jade City in my previous video. Please click that description down below and click that link to get the full context. Uh, but oh my god, like, um, Fonda Lee is so fantastic as a writer. Uh, she makes you really, really care about the characters. And if you want, like, a quick summarization, because I'm not going to summarize the whole thing but think godfather meets yakuza meets magic that's basically what uh the green bow saga is and this is the second one jade war and it in my opinion it's better than uh jade city but like i feel like all these books are just going to get better and better and they're all s tier they're all fantastic again i haven't read the third one yet but they're all so 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 good and great urban fantasy too fantastic absolutely nails it out of the park um I can't wait to read the third one. Um, again, I get burnout if I stay with the series for too long. So that's why I space it out quite a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, just look at the Wheel of Time. Like, pretty much my schedule is, like, I read at least one Wheel of Time book a month. Like, it absolutely needs to happen. Um, but, yeah, so that's Jade War. Uh, I will finish uh, Jade Legacy, the last book, uh, probably next month. Um, and yeah, so uh, without further ado, let's get into Knife of Dreams. This is an S-tier book. Um, however, I still think Age of Madness is a little bit better. I think I think the first Law Trilogy might be, besides Lord of the Rings, that it will always be my top. Like, my second favorite fantasy series of all time. Like, I really, really love Jiraiya Comics first uh, Law universe. Anyways... Uh, Knife of Dreams is like where Robert Jordan finally got out of the schlog and stuff started happening. Unfortunately, after this book, he died without finishing the story. So what happened is uh, Brandon Sanderson had to take over. Um, and then he did three more books after this one, concluding the whole series. Um, which I've read the first one of that, so we'll get into that later on. But uh, yeah, like uh, Knife of Dreams is one of Robert Jordan's great. Like it really brings it back to like when I first read The Eye of the World and couldn't not put the book down. Like that's that's where it came back to. And after I finished The Wheel of Time, I will make a Wheel of Time tier list going over all the Wheel of Time books and what I think about them and stuff. Um, but yeah, so Knife of Dreams, fantastic. It's Robert Jordan's last hurrah, unfortunately, but um, he's still still very, very good. Uh, a Full Moon, which is the second book in the Dresden File series. This one focuses on vampires. Again, very good. Uh, I would say it's better than the first book. Um, so that's already off to a good start. You want your sequels to be better than uh, your first book. Because sometimes you could get a high success off that first book. And then all the rest of the books are just kind of mediocre. Um, which is what happened with uh, Prince of Thorns, at least in my opinion. Um but yeah, uh, overall pretty good. Again, these uh, stories are pretty simple. It's a pretty easy read. Ignore that. My computer is fine. I said it's fine. Thank you. Uh, all right. Now we have the last book in the Bill Hodges trilogy, End of Watch. Uh, this one's going to go C tier. Like, yeah, like it was not good. Like, so it started out as like a true crime thing this whole trilogy and then an element appears in this which i really really don't like that's really annoying and they try to explain it so it's not as mystical but it's pretty mystical and that just threw me off it was cool seeing the characters conclusions and stuff like that but uh, i mean uh i it just jumped the shark for me i i didn't really i like the character endings and stuff but like how the story progressed and how 
the villain did what he did was just kind of like not cool like <laughs> not good <laughs> in my opinion but uh yeah so overall uh end of watch pretty good um then i read Coraline, which uh you probably know that name from the stop motion animated movie i personally like that more than the book but the book is still excellent it's like a modern day like fairy tale because like the grim fairy tales like red Riding hood and stuff were originally super super scary to scare children into like you know not going into the woods not talking to strangers and stuff like that and Coraline uh follows that same thing uh you know it is a children's book but it's also pretty dark at places kind of scary at places um I've read this book multiple times throughout my life it's one of my favorites um I would put it in a high A tier um yeah I put it like right here uh it's very very good I enjoy it quite a bit um, again, it's definitely YA, but it's a short book. You could just read right there. Anytime I'm struggling with reading, I'll just read Coraline and then I'm all set after that. Then we had, and then I woke up. Uh, this is kind of a zombie book, kind of not. Uh, this one is like, you can never trust a narrator. Like the narrator is telling a story, but you can't trust him because he might be insane the entire time, but you're not, you don't know. It's not entirely again this one's just short like i really like the premise and it's a different spin on the zombie idea like it's it's really really good uh so if you want something different from like the zombie genre definitely definitely pick this up it's very 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 good um i would put this probably i don't want to give it an a tier we're getting b tier heavy but screw it um no that's not where i want you uh, I put this like bottom B tier. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, again, short read. So yeah. Now we're on the last book, which is the 12th Wheel of Time book, A Gathering Storm, which is written in part by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. Basically Brandon Sanderson, um, after Robert Jordan died, he had a bunch, he had the whole ending laid out. Uh, it was just writing it, but unfortunately he died. Um, and Brandon Sanders or, um, Robert Jordan's wife reached out to Brandon Sanderson, who was an up and coming author at the time. He had only written, I believe, Elantris at the time, which I'm currently reading and she liked it. Oh no. Uh, he also wrote Mistborn. She read Mistborn and really liked it, which is Brandon Sanderson's, uh, one of his most popular, uh, books that I've yet to read, read, um, but yeah, so then he took on a five-year task of finishing up the Wheel of Time, and he did so, and he did so fantastically. These are my favorite books. These are what I tell myself, get through the slog, because you're going to reach Sanderson soon, and then you finally reach Sanderson. And he's really good. I, I won't say, a lot of people say he saved the Wheel of Time. I won't say that. I, say, I would say because of Knife of Dreams, Robert Jordan would have eventually uh, gotten him back to um where he was with like his mojo and stuff like that but brandon sanderson does an excellent job uh however in gathering storm he's trying to emulate um robert jordan style a little bit brandon and um you know it that's that's my only complaint but other than that it's it's really really good i want to put an s tier i would put it like high a tier um just because i i like to call this the memory of light trilogy because basic like the brandon sanderson uh three books in the wheel of time i like to call it the memory of light trilogy because basically it's a whole one big story that's just the ending of the wheel of time and this one is just like set up basically it's it's just giant setup and then uh the next two books are the payoff but that completes my uh half year book review or tier list uh these are all the books i've read these are all the rankings i would give them Again, I, I read pretty good books most of the time. Uh, it's only a couple duds here and there. But uh, overall, like, my experience with reading these here is great. And I've already read more than uh, what I read last year. I've read 22 books so far, and it's only half the year. Whereas last year, I read about 23, 24 uh, within the entire year. So I'm trying to get to 40 books this year, reading all 40 books. And maybe after I do, um, maybe at my uh, year-end um tier list i'll like reshuffle these a little bit uh because we'll be dealing with like 40 books and stuff like that but as the half a year stands uh this is my top 
this is my uh, tier list out of the 22 books I've read so far. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and subscribe to my other two channels, which are Sinister Sheep. That's like kind of my main channel where I discuss movies, comic books, uh, or not comic books, but like movies, uh, analog horror, um, and stuff like that. It's basically my main channel. This is a side channel for all the books and stuff like that. Um, then I have uh, Black Hudson Productions, which is... Uh, where I do my podcasts um, with Markeith and Peter. We do uh, We Didn't Ask For This, which is me and Markeith's podcast, where we just talk about whatever we want. Uh, and then we have Anime on the Rocks, where me and my friend Peter drink while talking about anime. I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, and yeah, so that's all my plugins. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.